Good evening, welcome and Merry Christmas if it's not too early. Um, Birmingham fans have been calling out for an out and out number one for quite a while now. Uh, someone to go out in heat 13 and 15 and win it. And it has been a weakness for a few years now at the, at the club. But now, now we have in the signing announced tonight an out and out number one. So welcome Nick Morris, looking forward to watching you this year. But I am a little bit flabbergasted. In fact, my flabber has never been so gasted. To read on various forums, some Brummie supporters complaining that his average is too high and therefore he won't be able to improve it. As far as I can see, there is a reason that it is that high because he is that good. And I think back to the Jason Lyons years and nobody complained that he was too good. Oh well, only in Speedway. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, um, very, very strange show this evening. It's going to be a strange show, isn't yeah. it? Because nobody's actually listening live. No, no. Um, no. Because we're having trouble with, uh, yeah. with that. <coughs> excuse me, with our virgin. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I tend to have lots of uh, troubles with virgins. So uh, yeah, uh, but we we have got people hopefully uh, sending questions in. Yeah. Um, Matt, it's been an interesting time with the AGM thoughts. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? Um, obviously, there was a handful of changes. Not too many. Of course, we have the one change, of course, we already knew was um, um, Leicester mm -hmm. going Moving up on. into the uh, top flight, of course. Um, interesting, of course, with the uh, the pairs, of course, has been reduced to only the three matches, of course, given the fact that it took so long to complete <laughs> last season. That's probably uh, probably not a bad thing, to you be think honest. think that's a good idea, yeah. Yeah. Um, Good news, of course, Edinburgh returning to race again in yes. 2023. Very pleased about um, that. And, of course, the player format in the Championship has uh, has now been changed. Changed, yeah. Um, so, plenty there. The aggregate bonus point returning, of course, after about 10 years, 10, 15 years away. Obviously, grow, obviously when I was growing up, mm -hmm. that was obviously the, the rule, and we had some, some great memories from those... Um, do bonus you, point runoffs. Um, are, you, are you you happy that's returned? Some in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. Mm -hmm. the The only the only thing that concerns me a little bit about that is going to be when you've got one track that's got such a big home advantage. Um, you're going to get a class meeting in one meeting, then yeah, big thumping in the other one. And some some uh, th this is this is one of the reasons why I was I was I like the the the, the you know, one point for getting to within six yes. points of a team there because it's still even if the team even if the away team lost the meeting, it still gave mm. them something to to go for. They've unfortunately that that wouldn't be the case next year. I must admit, I personally think it's a retrograde step. Don't yeah. I, I like the point system to the way they had and people saying it was too complicated. Well, if that's too complicated for you to work out, you probably need to go back to school. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, that that that's my my my. Personal opinion on the, that. The the bonus point, um, actually, the bonus point is good when it's two class meetings and you get a bonus point runoff because it's, mm. you know, you get an extra race and there's always that tension of of a of a bonus point mm. runoff. Um, but unfortunately, you're not going to get a bonus point runoff in every single meeting. So no, and also it's a bit of an advantage to ever come second as well because you get that bonus point runoff on your home track. Well, this is it. So so th there is that that side of it as well. Yeah. But um, I think that that's a small niggle mm -hmm. uh, for me, but um, apparently, when they asked, the supporters said they wanted it back. So back it comes. Yep, of course. And I think they've already uh, given the uh, problems that we had completing the season last year. They've obviously uh, done a you little bit. You mean the work. season that we still haven't completed? Absolutely. Yeah, still <laughs> haven't completed it yet. So even though we've had the potty summer in over forty years with no rain. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to complete it next year with two completely different lineups. Absolutely, yeah. And one lineup being in the the uh, Premiership, and the other lineup being in the uh, Championship. Yeah, <laughs> and so they're going to have to 
artificially strengthen the. Uh, it's two teams now, isn't it? Because I think um, Glasgow decided not to not to compete in the final in the end, didn't they? Yes. So, yeah. Which because they felt it was it was inappropriate to for the Jubilee Trophy. Not Bear to be in the year of the Jubilee. No, and well, the Queen had died. In yeah. the, year the Queen had died, which was a bit of a strange one, I thought. Uh, but. Yeah, well, it's a reason, I suppose. Uh, only in Speedway. Nice to hear that um, Workington's come back. At, and yeah, nice to hear my phone's still working. Yeah, I know, yeah. I was oh, is, say, it, you know, is that your phone? I'm, tr- I'm, I'm, I'm desperately stabbing my phone to stop it making that noise, <laughs> and it's yours. It's my phone, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's yeah. Why, don't I? One thing I was... I am intrigued, of course, is this uh, tie-up between the BSBL and MyLaps, which we're going to see uh, transponders roll yes. back to the Premiership and Championship That's clubs. Good. That is going to be interesting. It'll give ac- Obviously, this technology will provide accurate information for live timing and assist in resolving close finishes. and also be made available to Eurosport and British Speedway Network for mm. use during their broadcasts. I mean, it'd be nice to sort of see some sort of information... Provided like a, a, a notice board or something with that, with the, the times coming up at the track, that would be um, fun. But it's going to be also be interesting to see how close to the times that we've been getting they actually are. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> rather than yeah. this yeah. poor guy with a stop. It would be nice to think they could have something that can tell that can tell a referee whether Rod has actually jumped the start or whether he's made a good start because. Mm. You know, will that be part of it as well? Then? I don't know whether it will be, to be honest. I'm not, whether they've got to sort of expanding it that far, we, we don't know. Mm. Uh, but just a quick rundown of the uh, the two main leagues. Of course, the the NDL um, has uh, got six teams here at the moment with the possibility of two extra joining later on mm-hmm. in the close season. But the Premiership, so you're going to have Bellevue, Ipswich, Kingsland, Leicester, Peterborough, Sheffield, Wolves... Uh, points limit 39 points for six riders want the teams to include one rising star league format is unchanged two home two away with the top four progressing to the playoffs knockout cut first round Wolves Bellevue Ipswich Leicester uh, Kingsland Sheffield and Peterborough well they've already had a better season than last year because they've got a bar to the semi-finals so <laughs> the season hasn't started yet and they're already in the semi-final so yeah uh, premiership pairs three rounds to take place at Ipswich Sheffield and Kings Lynn. And in the Championship, so you've got Berwick, Birmingham, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Oxford, Redcar, Plymouth, Poole, and Scunthorpe. 40 point limit for seven riders. League format, one home and one away. It'd be interesting to get your views on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, player format, the top six qualify for the playoffs and are split into two mini leagues of three. League leaders elect uh, get to select their two mini league opponents, winner of each mini league. Qualify for the grand final. Knockout cut first round. Berwick against Redcar. Uh, quarterfinals. Berwick or Redcar will take on Glasgow. Scunthorpe against Birmingham. Paul against Plymouth. And Edinburgh against Oxford. League point scoring system. Two for a win. A draw is a super heat. Loss, no points. Uh, aggregate bonus. Yeah, so that's say, new in the championship the as well, isn't it? Yeah. The, the super heat. Yep. Um... What's wrong with the draw? I, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know why they've got rid of it. It's uh, um, but, uh, one home, one away in the championship. If you don't get into the playoffs, that's going to be quite a short season, I think. Isn't it? Um, yeah, uh, I'm not happy. Mm. I'm, I, I would have liked the the two home, two away, as that they originally promised. Yeah. Um, I desperately hope that Birmingham's going to not have a short season. Like yeah, we did I think last it's a big year. season for Birmingham, mm. isn't it, this year? You know, and obviously the team building that's been done so far, particularly with today's news of Nick Morris. <coughs> um, Shows ambition. Going from the black country to Birmingham, of course, as we say. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's obviously a, a, a big statement, I think, for the Birmingham promotion to get someone mm. who is going to guarantee big points Absolutely. For, for Birmingham. And there's a rider that's... If I, as, I, as I suspect we'll start the season at number one will be someone who can they can have every confidence in going out and winning the first heat mm-hmm. well let's hope so Absolutely, that, yeah. that's what we've we, we've been missing that, that in those big heats isn't it that that, that big hitting um, rider since well, since Adam Ellis in the National League <laughs> yeah probably is isn't it so yeah, absolutely um yeah, and we had a you know when we was in the elite league, we had a, 
a period of not having a number one. Mm-hmm. Um, and we always well, they looked like number ones on paper, but they weren't number ones on the track, unfortunately, mm-hmm. were they? So, mm-hmm. absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Bjarni Pedersen and Cash Brzezak. Yeah. Uh, but hi ho. Um, yeah. So the we got some questions that, that have come through. Uh, yeah, I've just asked for questions regarding that, but uh, they haven't come in yet. But I'll start from the beginning. Um, so usually a good place. Uh, Elliot Hunt says, "Who do we think the final Wolves two riders will be?" Interesting. Steve question. Worrell one. Not sure on the other. I personally think it will be Steve Worrell, although I'm not not really decided on whether I would have Steve Worrell back because I mean he had a brilliant season last year. You know, mm-hmm. I think he needed the move really from after a, I think he'd sort of gone stale a little bit at Bellevue and I think it gave him a fresh impetus mm-hmm. coming to Wolves. But is he going to have as good a season next year? Because that element of surprise has gone really, hasn't it? Um, I keep hearing rumours about Craig Cook coming to Wolves, which. I'm a little bit sceptical about. Sceptical in the sense that you don't think it's going to happen or sceptical in the sense that whether you be don't want move. it to happen? Yeah, whether it would be, well, both, to be honest. I mean, I think you know, most people remember the 2016 player final when he had that little uh, bust up with Freddie Lindgren. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that uh, CVS certainly uh, made his views pretty clear on what he thought of him after mm-hmm. the, in, in, in the, uh, at the past uh, season forum that we had. Right in, in August after that year, um, plus the other thing as well with, with Craig Cook, of course, you know, as everybody knows, he has had problems, of course, you know, away from the track in, in recent too. seasons. Um, it's, I think, it's it would be obviously if he if he signs for Wolves, then I'll get behind him. Yeah, you know? but I, th- I think it's it would be a, it would be a bit of a gamble, I think, to take him on. Um, the person that I get my sources from is is a hundred percent convinced that he's coming to Wolves, but hey ho. Okay, we'll who, keep we'll keep an eye on that one. So. Who would you like if you if you was the manager? Who would you be? Um, well, I, I would have loved to have seen Josh Pickering at Wolves, but obviously I don't think that's obviously not going to happen now because I don't think his average is going to fit. Um, mm-hmm. I was wasn't overly surprised by the news. When it broke this morning that Rory Slime was coming back towards because as soon as I saw that he was he was gonna come back and have another go, I thought you know, he's very, very highly thought of by the, the Wolves mm-hmm. promotion. Um I think we did miss him last year. I think we missed him, his, his his leadership in in the pits. That's not a slight on mm-hmm. on Sam Masters, but he's a you know totally different character, I mm-hmm. think. Um I feel a little bit for I mean I went to his to his um benefit meeting at the end of twenty one, you know, mm-hmm. he had a Big, big crowd for that at Wolves. It was a really good field. A lot of fans, you know. He deserved a benefit, Mason, because he'd been such a great servant to British Speedway. Yeah. But yeah. I can understand why some of those might be thinking, well, he's had a benefit. He's, I've paid to a benefit fund for him, and now he's come back. Yeah. Um, I gather the reason that he's come back is because he's, obviously, he's got a young family. They went back to Australia, and they haven't settled. Um, so... I suppose in that sense it's understandable that mm. he has that he has come back. Um, but whether he'll get another benefit meeting when he retires again <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> remains to be seen. So A benefit benefit meeting. He should have a benefit meeting where he gives all the money back, maybe. I'd <laughs> yeah, I saw someone on one of the forums suggest is he going to... Is he going to... Be pay for his own fare using his benefit money fund yeah. uh, that he got last time. But, uh, but you, I mean, we're, we're laughing about it, but... Um, it happens, doesn't it? It's just one of the, just a change yeah, of heart. Yeah, I don't. I got the impression that he was sort of. I mean, he should have retired, of course, at the end of 2020. But of course, 2020, as we know, never didn't happened. exist. Didn't exist yeah. as a speedway season. Um, well, as you count a few matches, of course, he won the British final that year at yes. Bellevue. Um, so we got that. We got the extra year out of him, but uh, he's back now. So I wish him wish him well. You know, I think mm-hmm. um, as I say, very very highly thought of. I mean. I think you know, a lot, good lot, racer. Yeah, good I racer. mean, myself, like a lot of other Wolves fans, for a, for a long time, long long time, Rory Schlein would, would probably not have been high on my list of, of favourite visiting riders. I always he always came across to be as been a bit of a moaning Aussie, but mm. um, he certainly won me around in the three four years that he had at Wolves. He was he was you know a really really good ambassador for the club. And that was coming from a whinging palm. <laughs> <laughs> we got any more questions? I mean, well, that, that kept well, yeah. us going. <laughs> well, there's always one, isn't there? You mm. ask for questions. David Dale. 
Where does your lap go when you stand up? What? Where does your lap go when you stand up? Oh, that's the question. It's Where does your lap go? No, when yeah. you stand up. Yeah. Another one as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if a cave caves in, is it still a cave? Let's, should we move on? Yeah, please. I think it might be an idea to move. We don't want to get into trouble here, do we, <laughs> so. uh, Pete Clark says, uh, track volunteers needed every Sunday at Perry Bar. Yep, and I haven't been down uh, once, I do and Lawrence has replied, of course, they get fed yeah. and watered. How was your holiday, by the way? My holiday was brilliant. Yeah. Nobody, nobody here wants to know about nah, that. Don't care. <laughs> don't I just care. thought I'd ask you to guess anybody else and not bothered, so... <laughs> Yeah, I ain't bothered either. Uh, what do we think of riders having retirement farewell meetings, then returning after a year or two? I know we spoke about this. Yes. <laughs> then returning after a year or two, and also promoters doing GoFundMe pages to pay for equipment, etc. Okay, I don't know about that second bit. Do you know anything about that? I've seen, what, I've, I've known one or two in the past who've done it, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think it's a common thing. Um, as I say, I think it's it's sort of you know doesn't sit comfortably with me when when riders. I mean, some of my link who had three benefit meetings off wolves, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not through retiring. He had the one obviously when he broke his leg in at the end of uh, at the end of the eighties, and then he had the testimonial, and then he had his farewell. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have a pro I don't have a problem with riders having benefit meetings when they've been long disturbance to British Speedway when I mean, they've ridden sort of you know 10, 15, mm. 20, or in some cases twenty five years, but. I think it sort of it sits 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 a little bit uncomfortable with me to be honest that they they do that and then they they come back. It's not I don't think they do it intentionally. I don't think Rory <coughs> Lyons, I don't think Rory Lyons did it with the intention of right. I'll come back. Or mm. I'll, get, I'll get I'll have a benefit meeting and then I'll come back after two years. I think there was a genuine intention to sort of you know go back home and sort of. Because yeah, oh, obviously he's, he's lived over here for so many years, and of course his family's got a young family, and as I say, his kids have, you know, never seen their their, their father's home country, mm. so they got to see it now, and but they haven't settled, so back he comes for another go. I mean, I, I personally haven't got a prob problem with it. Uh, I mean, if they've had their benefit meeting, they've had their benefit meeting. They just don't get one when they do retire. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it's the only way around around it really isn't it ah next yeah. question ok so, so back to the AGM um, Elliot Hunt says why did they drop the two fixtures home and away in the championship in favour of a smaller league competition playoffs could have could have been consented to top four as top six is not required there was plenty of dates as well also I don't see what is wrong with a draw <laughs> this super heat business costs clubs more money okay. and can take away from junior meetings. One team then gets a chance to take an extra point, which is unfair on the other team. Okay, so let, let's, yeah, I mean, a lot to dig into mm. there. Uh, as far as the super heat's concerned, what is wrong with the draw? We're not Americans. Mm. Um, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I, and, and I hadn't considered the fact that you've got to pay the riders for that extra heat. Well, that's it. Um, super, the, I mean, the super heat to me, it, it sort of benefits clubs that have got a strong top two, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You look at Ipswich last season. I mean, they would have loved having the the super heats with Jason Doyle in there mm. in their lineup and, and possibly Kingdom, so. for Birmingham it might be good because Nick Morris mm. and Justin Sedgman is a decent decent top two, yeah, decent top two. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't like not being able to have a draw. It's going to leave one side feeling really flat when actually they've done really well. Mm, that's it. And getting no reward for it. So. Yeah, but I mean, as regards to the the, the one at home and one away in in the championship, I think that's that's clearly been done as a as a reaction to the fact that the championship took so long to complete its <laughs> fixtures last season. You know. But, uh, yes, in a, in a season that didn't really suffer from bad weather over much. Not really, no. Uh, it, what, what is interesting to me is this new competition, which is going to be the BSN thing, that they've got a tie-in with the BSN. That's interesting. So one would presume that's going to be all over the uh Oh, the group the competition. Mm. Yeah, group competition, yeah. yeah. So, sit there, so... 
<coughs> Birmingham Mini League Group set Berwick, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Birmingham, Redcar, Scunthorpe, Oxford, Poole, Gla- um, Plymouth, Brit winners and high scorers and runners up progress to the semi final. So. Yeah. What was Birmingham's again? Is it, is it Rare, Redcar, and Somerset? Scunthorpe, I think. Not Somerset. I mean, um, not Scun- I, wish it, oh, I wish it was Somerset, to yes. be fair, but um, Birmingham, Redcar, and, and Scunthorpe. So. Just to welcome Red Girl back to Barry Moore again. Yeah. So. Hey, hey. Uh, that, that's all finished and done with now. Yeah. You've even got a red car top on, so. <clears throat> well. <laughs> uh, and on, on, on that uh, note of the Brummies, uh, uh, Elliot wants to know any ideas on who the final Brummies heat leader and the other two riders will be? Uh, got 14.01 points left to play with. So we've got three riders to get out, haven't we? I would be very surprised if Lee Complin isn't back. Yeah, I think he made a big impression, didn't he, last yeah. year? So, um, reserve is going to going to be good. I don't know what Tom Brennan's average is, although I did read somewhere that he was going to Glasgow, but I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I've, about seen, it. A couple, I've seen a couple of th- things about him <coughs> going to Glasgow, but I was about to ask. Uh, uh, our fellow uh, listeners to tell us what Tom Brennan's average <laughs> was. <laughs> uh, we, we, well, I can find out for you on here, can't I? So this, I would imagine it's around about eight, isn't I it? I do have my uses, so... Uh, not, yeah. not much, though. <laughs> uh, Leicester and Sheffield look strong so far, but aces are going to be strong also. Bewley back, mm-hmm. being leaked on a Polish website. Also, don't rule out Lambert also, says Jeff Daniels. It'd be good to have them about, both back. Yeah, about six weeks ago, I, mean, I think I said on here, didn't I? I thought that Lambert wouldn't surprise me if Lambert was back next year. I'm not so quite so sure now, mm. to be honest. I think all the stuff that went on at the end of last season with the about whether he was, you know, made him that missing that um, the league meetings that uh, Bellevue Road afterwards after they'd won the title. Um, maybe that would have. Uh, and then back to it. It, would be, it would be great. I mean, especially if Brennan's there as well. You know, you've got Bewley, if you'd have Bewley, Brennan, and, and Lambert all in the same team, you know, that would be. That know, would be a team and a half, wouldn't it? A team and a half, yeah. <laughs> you know, t- three three of British, you know, British players, probably their best the best three mm. young British riders that are coming through the uh, through the ranks at the moment, so. And um, we're, yeah. Tom Brennan's average is. Is. One, uh, one job, that's all he's got. One job. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Okay, then. 688. 688. Yeah. You say that that would fit okay, wouldn't it? I'm surprised it's that low, if I'm honest. Does that include the 5% reduction? Well, I don't think it is, but I mean, it's there or there. It's going to be there. Well, if that's the case, then it's 722, but it's either 722 or 688, so... But I think that's doable with, what do we say, at 14 to play with? Yeah, 14.01, yeah. Mm. Mm, makes the team a bit, might make the team a little bit top-heavy, that's the only thing. So. There'd, be plenty of, there'd be plenty of race wins in that team, I think, mm. but uh, it's no good having race wins if you're having a rider that just trails in, in last as well, at the same race. It'd almost be like having yeah. a pool situation, we've got three good heat leaders. Yeah. So. But if it's the yeah, I mean if it's the six, you've got four points approximately for the other two riders, haven't yeah. you? Oh, is, it, is it? I think it's fair to say that um, I don't see either Ashley Morris or James Shane's been been back at. I think James Shane's has virtually ruled himself out from reading between the lines of, of what he said in the Speedway Star. Yeah. Um, that he, you know, I think it's a good decision for him personally. Mm-hmm. Because you can't get too many more injuries, can you? No, that's it, so... Um, Ashley Morris, I'm sorry about. Mm. Because he's a great lad, and I think he's got the makings of a decent rider as well. Yeah. Um, I think the problem that Ashley's had over the last few years is he just hasn't ridden enough meetings. He's not just only doing the one league, so... Yeah. So um, I hope he gets the team, Mm. if indeed he wants. Mm. Uh, Simon Corbett, our current um, Prediction League champion, says, uh, Championship 40-point average gets lower every year. 
probably pay more to watch lesser riders. Let's diminish, diminish the sport again. So he's sort of gone off on one <laughs> I, 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 I'm sort of with him in a way. Yeah. Um, because, I, I mean, I've gone on record as saying it should be 42.5 and that's it. Yeah. 42.5 gives you a 45 all draw if everybody scores to their average. Um, on you know on both teams, that's so that's what it should be built to. Yeah. And the problem is that once you start building to lower averages, teams become weaker, and then the heat leaders have easier rides, and that and and everybody has slightly easier rides, and their averages inflate. Inflate. And then you go, then you think, well. They've got this average, this average, this average. We, we better cut the averages down again. <laughs> um, so it should be 42 points. Let's have a look at the announcements that have been made then in, yes. the, in the league so far. So Bellevue haven't um, made any signings yet. Ipswich, uh, they've signed Jason Doyle, of course. Mm -hmm. Frederick Jackson is the only name on the team sheet so far at Kings Lynn. Uh, Peterborough, of course, haven't named anybody yet either. But uh, the busiest clubs have been Wolves, Leicester, and Sheffield. So Leicester so far have got Max Frick, Chris Harris, Richard Lawson, and Nick Morris. Sheffield have got Jack Holder, Tobias Muselak, David Balago, and Lewis Kerr. And Wolves have got Luke Becker, Sam Masters, Ryan Douglas, Leon Flint, and Rory Schlein. Luke Becker's another rider I wouldn't mind seeing, by the way. Riding at Birmingham. Yeah, I, I've I've heard that he has, it has been discussed, but mm. he's been sort of advised not to race championship. I don't know whether that's true, but probably could do with riding a bit more often. I think mm. because he's got a, you know, he's got a huge amount of potential. Mm. Um, he's, he's, you know, midway through last season, he really found some good form, but just didn't really maintain it. Didn't kick on. Yeah. But, so, I mean, let's have a look at some of the... Let's look at Bellevue, for instance, do we? I mean, somebody on, I said that Dan Bewley is signed for them. Huh? Yeah, it's been, I think it was on his Polish club's right. website. They, they put that he... There's nothing being confirmed yet, although I'd, I'd be shocked if he wasn't back he wasn't. There. Mm. I think, you know, I think he does need to be right. Both him and Lambert, I think, need to be racing in the UK next year because... They're, they're at that stage of their career where they need to be riding as often as they possibly can. And do you think Lambert could be back to King's Lynn? Mm. Not so sure. Mm. Personally, I think if he does come back to the UK, it'll be at Bellevue. Okay. Because they could fit both him and Bewley in. Their averages are relatively low still from when they last rode in the UK. So, but uh, with Bellevue, of course, are going to be you know makes a mockery of the averages a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it does a little bit. But hey, that's the, that's the way things go. Unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. clubs have done that for years. They've you know a rider's had a bad season and suddenly becomes sought after because he's on a false average. So. Yes, yeah. It's where Stefan Nielsen is, I think. Mm, yeah, I think he's on so, a false average. Chef, I think Leicester have made a pretty good start to their team building. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, pretty strong top four. That is, you know, obviously Nick Morris knows the track well from from his championship days. Mm -hmm. um, Max Frick, I think, you know, is, is obviously an outstanding rider. Um, of course, he was obviously was the full guy for Bellevue, so that sort of suggests that Bewley or Lambert or both are coming are coming back. Um, Richard Lawson, a good solid competitive rider, with Lord Rider, lower second, lower heat leader, um, and uh, Coventry legend Chris Harris at Leicester. <laughs> Interesting, Interesting one. I, can, yeah. I mean, I, I can remember going there for their first top flight meeting back in 2014, and he guested for Wolves, and they. He got, I think he got booed as he walked onto the track before the meet. He did, mm. to be fair. I think they were warming up for when Coventry came back. So It's going to be interesting to see where um, Bomber's going to end up in the championship. Yeah. Um, what, was a guest? Well, he's going to be, yeah, probably <laughs> a guest for it. Yeah, so. just, yeah it's just guest for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sheffield, Jack Older, Debar's Muselik, David Belago, Lewis Kerr, again, solid so far. Mm-hmm. Good to see David Belago back in the UK. It is, good, yeah. Good rider. Um, and obviously the Wolves team, Becker, Masters, Douglas, Flint and Schlein, that's, you know, with the exception of Rory Schlein so far, that's... that's Last year's team. Last year's team, yeah, so... They didn't do so bad, though, like that, did they, last year? Well, until the semi-final, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, the, the last three seasons have, have been semi-final capitulations. So. Yes. 
Let's drop into the championship then. So Edinburgh, Plymouth, Glasgow, Poole and Redcar yet to make any announcements so far. But for Berwick, well, they've completed their team. Uh, Leon Flint, Thomas Jorgensen, Joy Etheridge, Jonas Knudsen, Nathan Stoneman, Rory Schlein and Connor Coles. Birmingham. Well, let's start with Berwick first of all. Yeah, I mean, that's not a bad... Bad team, is it? It looks a good team at the moment mm. because so many other teams haven't, haven't signed well, any riders yet. Well, there so is I that. think if the league starts now, they'd have a, they'd have a pretty good chance of winning it. So. Rory Schlein's a good signing for yeah, a very good thing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a long old way for him to go, yeah, isn't it? Every, every week, mind yeah. you, but uh, we'll be doing the journey with uh, Leon, of course. Yeah, well, I think that'll be good for Leon as mm. well. I mean, the two of them both in this, you know, because obviously Leon going to Wolves when, when Rory was, was already there, so. I think, you know, he's a sort of good rod to take on his wing. And, you know, as we, as we know, Leon Flint had a really, you know, made some real good progress last year Didn't with they? winning, you know, two. A lot of time for Leon Flint. Yeah, I've got, you know, he's a good lad. Good lad, yeah. yeah and I think he's got potential to, to really go far in this sport. Mm-hmm. Um, Birmingham, James Pearson, Justin Sedgman, Stefan Nielsen, and of course, Nick Morris, Morris as was announced today. So I think they've made, a, made quite a bit of a statement with that Nick Morris signing. Yep. Um, it, there's ambition there, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, I know the track's been worked on every week weekend um, since we closed. Yeah. Um, it's, and anybody wants to go down there and volunteer, just turn up, and Lawrence will um, make you a cup of coffee. It sometimes t- tastes quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but also, I think that the, the signing of Stefan Nielsen as an asset. Shows ambition as well. Yeah, he had a. You know, I mean, he had some difficult times last season, didn't he? Started he started off really started, well. Started, Ross started off really well. Never really maintained it, and of course, mm. got cropped before the end of the season, mm. as, as did pretty much everybody else, else yeah. in the team. So, yeah. So, uh, I think James Pearson will obviously will have benefited from having the years' experience, and knowing, you can't not have had him last year, and then not ha- and then. Yeah, it would have been. Not, it would have been completely pointless, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, so I think he's he showed his potential. Yeah, and he'll he'll benefit, I think, from having Sedgman and Morris in the team. Mm. You know, two fellow Aussies will obviously you know take him under their wing. So, and Sedgman's exceeded most people's expectations. Well, I mean, considering the the almost well, disgust when yes. when when they, it was announced that he was coming back to Birmingham. Um, yeah, but I think you know when we were both at Birmingham's presentation mm-hmm. evening, and you know you could tell from what he was saying about how he felt about the Birmingham promotion, he was he, he was, was a no-brainer really, that he yeah. was going to come back. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, Oxford, of course, they've completed their team as well, so they've got Sam Masters, who's left Edinburgh, Lewis Kerr, Scott Nichols, Cameron Heaps, Jordan Jenkins, Henry Atkins, and Luke Colleen. Luke Colleen, I don't, I know very little about. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks quite top heavy. <laughs> Does a bit, yeah. Of course, Scott Nichols only doing the championship this year, not doing the premiership. Is that, that, is that definite? Yeah, he, he, uh, he yeah said that's that. what he said. Yeah. Mm. Well, at the moment, of course, mm. I suppose as as the season mm. starts, so I suppose there'll be a few. He doesn't stop him from maybe, guesting, uh, I suppose. <laughs> will be maybe uh, in his ear a little bit, you know. So, but good, good. They've got obviously got a good number one now in in Sam Masters. Mm-hmm. Um, arguably the best number one in the league. Well, about that. Um, going to be some interesting battles between Sam Masters and Nick Morris, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, mm. they know each other really well, anyway. So, yes. um, yeah, I think that, that's off to say a bit, bit top heavy. Um, it's going to need one of those, you know, one of those four odds at the bottom there: Heaps, Jenkins, Atkins, and Colleen to really step up. I do write Henry Atkins. You mm. know, I mean, I, he always, certainly whenever I saw him riding, he was riding for Plymouth in, in the National League, you certainly always ride Birmingham very well. Yes. Um, and St- uh, Scunthorpe, they're the only other team that have been active so far. So far they've got Joe Thompson, Zane Kennedy and Connor Mountain. Connor Mountain's made a lot of progress, I think, over the last... Oh, gosh, yeah. He was, yeah. He, he was almost like a different rider last year. Mm. Um Oh, it was a, he was a rider I was half hoping was end up at Birmingham. Yeah. But, um, so let's let's do a little bit of reading between the lines then. Um, Glasgow. Well, they've been Tom clear. Brennan or not Tom Brennan is the, obviously yeah. the. They seem to have been clearing the decks a little bit, don't they, Glasgow? Because mm. most of the announcements they've been making on social media have been saying such and such is not coming not, back not next year. Back, yeah. Such and such is not coming back next year. So. 
So usually just before they get announced for whichever team they're yeah. they're riding. What's for. your um? What are you in favour of announcing all the signings in one go or drip feeding them in? I think drip feeding them in because it keeps interest yeah. up. Um, and I and I also think um, signing. In Birmingham's case, for instance, signing Nick Morris just before Christmas is a nice little Christmas present. Yeah. Um, you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, it, and it has really, I mean, let, let, let's use Birmingham as, as the the type of drip feed. It has really brought up people's interest in the team. Or, you know, lots of people discussing what's next, who's the next and who's not going to be the next and who they want and who they don't want. Yeah. Um, I don't think you get any of that when it's just here's our seven riders bang um i don't you, there is no no discussion as, as such in that's in it not in the same way yeah, anyway. well not not meant some clubs do it most years don't they they just do it right bang. we've got our one to seven here they are mm-hmm. you've got a you know four month wait for the new season um what's your preference i prefer the drip third in the mint to be honest mm. um i think to be fair most of these most of these teams already know where they want to be do. anyway. They just sort of string it out as long as possible for, yeah. as you say, for the publicity. So, um, yeah, but uh, which I'm, I'm all in favour of. Yeah, I think Oxford will be hoping for big things next year, won't they? Because they, they had, you know, I think they were. I mean, I, I've rated them highly last season, but it never really it never got happened going, for did them. They? Yeah. Although I suppose really for Oxford, their their big <coughs> thing really was just established in. in Established themselves, and they did that. They did. They had some great crowds at Oxford, and uh, love to be able to think that I might be able to get down there next year. So, because that is now, especially from a Birmingham perspective, because that's now Birmingham's local derby. So exactly, and yet we we only pay them once. Yeah, unless we get them in the knockout cup at some point, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, or in the playoffs, of course. All the playoffs, yeah. I think positive. So, I, I am fairly positive that we're going to make make the playoffs. Difficult to say at the moment. It is some difficult to say. Haven't signed anybody but, yet. Yeah, but, uh, but it, it just feels a good team at the moment. Yeah. Um, but we're not here to talk about Birmingham, even though, th- though they are the most important <laughs> team in the whole of Speedway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do, do we have any more questions? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Robert Hackers says, uh, why do they have AGM meetings? No change, every fan fed up with promoters, no action, doubling up guests and rider replacement, coverage of Speedway on Eurosport, terrible one week miss, two week back, another week miss. You can see where I'm going with this guy. Mm-hmm. Really. Yeah. British Speedway should be on should every an, week, he says. I think he should watch another sport. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. British Speedway should be on every week. That's certainly what we're used to. Well, it's what we've got with Sky, isn't mm-hmm. it? And with BT as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, uh, I've, I've, I've said this before, I think, you know, I think Speedway was always onto a real good thing with, with, Sky. with Sky, and it, they never took advantage of it, unfortunately. Um, I think Sky, in the end, got frustrated by the fact that they were spending so much money on rained off on meetings, pitching, pitching, you know, getting everything set up for meetings because it didn't, it wasn't cheap for them to do it. No, um, and then someone comes along and says, "Sorry, the track's too wet. We're not running." Mm. So, yeah, I um, would like to see it on. I would like, you know, I think it does need to be on. I'll, I'll balance it out really because yes, you want to see coverage of speed rate, but I often wonder whether it would, would be better to have a. A highlights package mm, that's been every said week, before. rather than having a, a live meeting because then you can showcase the best bits from the week bits. rather than just having you know mm. just a sort of match of the day yeah. thing. Um, that would require, of course, cameras in every single. But then, in most places, do record their own. Well, that's it. So. That could be used, uh, and that's something that I think the BSN should. Think yeah, well, about BSM was definitely something that was a big positive last yeah, year, wasn't it? You know? Absolutely. Um, they obviously had a one or two issues, obviously with meetings mm-hmm. earlier on the season. But I think from what I saw of it, their coverage it's got, the better season, better got better and better and better. They learned, and it's affordable as well. It's not, mm. you know certainly not ex- not not massively expensive to no, not at all to buy. So, mm. and when I brought I brought the, the season pass and 
I've never done that before. <laughs> did, did you watch every single meeting, or did you? Just... No, I didn't. I, 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 I've still got some. I, I've started going back over some of them and watching some of them in the close season. Well, that's the good thing as well. Is once you bought them, that's it. You've you got can them. go back and yeah, watch them any time. So, nice. um, well, give us uh, some more of the questions in that one question that you just read because there was a few points in that. Uh, again, uh, from Robert Hackers, mm. me. Um, okay, so doubling up, guest and replied, re- okay. replied replacement. Yeah, so he's moaning about the things that we all moan about, really. <laughs> yeah, we would all love to see doubling up not happen. It was the is worst it, idea. It's impossible. It's impossible to stop it now, unfortunately. I mm. think because I think ultimately the riders want the doubling up because they want the extra meetings, which yeah. you can you can understand really. If I was a rider, I'd want. Yeah, Something particularly that, as there's, aren't, there's so few teams. What we actually need is more teams. Yeah, that's the, the, the bottom line. Get more teams, and then you've got a better chance of getting rid of doubling up. And you know, you have to wonder why not bring some of these national league teams up. You were going to have you'd have, then you're going to have to share the riders out over. You know, you're going to have to thin them out, and so the standard. You would have you would have a situation initially, of course, where you'd have a lot of riders that would be bit out of their depth mm, unfortunately but, because but, unfortunately we've created the rod shortest through doubling yeah, up so yeah so it's the only way that's the only way of doing it yeah i mean the premiership are doing their bit uh-huh. with the 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 rising star. rising star thank you i was going to say fast track rider and that's that was that was that's that's that, 1970s that was the pre- that yeah that was no, the pre- not, not quite 1970s yeah so. <laughs> that was the previous incarnation yeah um so i think that's a really good idea and people i mean Leon Flint's yeah. really benefited from it. Yeah, I just, I've just, you know, the thing is though, the, the Premiership or as it was before, the Elite League has, has tended to do more things to try and promote younger English riders than mm. than the second tier has. I think that's true. Yeah, um, I think this is the problem when you got clubs. I would like to see the Championship the do, do a a rising star from the National League. Um, it just offers that progression, doesn't it? Natural yeah. progression. So yeah, absolutely. And and then and they need that, and it's less pressure on them as well. Yeah, you know, because because they know that really the people that they're racing against are the other rising stars, mm. and that's the race that's important. The rest, great if I get some points, but yeah, you know. uh, and pressure. I mean, look at um, I, don't, I think Pearson last year. He didn't have a lot of pressure put on him to perform. It was mm. all about learn how to do it really yeah um there's going to be more expectation on him i think this year of course but, but of course there'll be more so. expectation by him i yeah. would imagine but um hopefully he can go through the season without getting injured again yeah because he was the only one, the only that one managed yeah it. so uh justin sedgman managed it as well yeah. didn't he but he only did half he did do the whole season though, didn't yeah. he, so. um so yeah Next bit on that. Uh, oh, oh, you on that one. There okay. was a few more We're on, on that. that. Okay. Uh, coverage of your speedway on Eurosport. Uh, fed up with no with promoters, no action. Um, so the, right at the beginning, he said, "Why do they have an AGM? Why nothing? do they have an AGM meetings? There's no change. Every fan gets fed up. Okay. No change. They do make changes, don't they? They do make changes. Although it, it tends to be sort of you know tweaking this, tweaking that. Mm. Um, I think there's, there's there's occasions really where they don't really address the the issues. Mm. I think the biggest thing for me is is basically two or three days of right. Let's sit down. Let's try and get more. Let's see if we can get more people into stadiums. That's the obvious one. Yeah, I mean the problem is. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> the problem is that the sport is run by the people that run the clubs. Yeah. I don't. Th- I can't think of another sport that does, does that. that. No. Certainly not in this country. It might be. In, might be in America. Maybe they do that. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think they do. I think they have franchises, don't yeah. they? And so they have. That's why they have AGMs, because they want to. Each promoter has got his own agenda, and he wants this sorted out and that sorted out, and somebody else, well, I don't want that sort. So they have to have AGMs to. Yeah. Shout to each other, I think, from what I've some, what cases heard. Walk, some cases walk, walk out. out. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't have to have AGMs if they didn't run the sport, if they had um, an FA. Yeah. 
yeah. for instance, or, or something like that. I don't know how you get from the situation that they're in to that situation. I don't know how that how you would do that. But I mean, the other thing is that somebody is people have mentioned before a, a Barry Hearn type figure mm. but they don't grow on trees no unfortunately <laughs> they don't so um, but that's you know I mean it's not rocket science that's what needs to happen without that happening nothing will really change uh, for the better but if you're running your own club are you going to s- vote it's like turkeys voting for Christmas. It is isn't a bit, it? yeah, unfortunately. So that's, yeah, okay. Mm. I, I, going just going back to the um, uh, Rich Thomas's uh, point on what do we think of riders having retirement farewell meetings mm-hmm. and so forth, so forth. Uh, Peacock replied with, um, "I will never get that twenty quid back." Go fund, go for me, pages. Don't raise as much as you think. Go fund, take a large chunk go, of yes, cash. I might go and tap on do. Rory's shoulder before the present time, before the practice night. <laughs> can have my twenty? Can have my twenty quid back, please, Rory? <laughs> yeah, we you, take, should, you should. You should make a line or yeah. line up, and when he comes in, says, "What's that line?" We're all waiting for our money, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we tend to forget that they go fund me and just give it and so forth and so forth. They do take, they do take a cut. They, take they, a they, cut don't, yeah. they don't do for nothing. Sure, uh, sure and we've caught that. up. So we got to, I have to thank everybody who has po- uh, posted on the page. Mm. We really are sorry. I've been trying for the last 50 minutes while the show's been going to try and get reconnected. But no, Virgin aren't having it. Sorry. It's the trouble with those virgins. They don't want it. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> you might have to cut that bit out. Yeah, just a bit. Yeah. As the bishop said to the actress. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, um, is there anything else on the AGM that we haven't covered? We've we spoke about the transponders. And I think that's gonna, that's a really positive move. Yeah. Obviously, um, you know, obviously, if we were on, we could probably get more people contributing about of course, yeah, their yeah, questions yeah, about yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. the transponders. I'm I'm certainly looking forward to that. Let's drop into the national league now, because of course, um, there, as has always made a bit of a strange thing that they have an AGM that's totally separate. Yeah, because they're told what they can what they can yeah, what they can't do before. Why is yeah. that? Why is that coming Because they're a you development do? league. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so the statement that was released uh yesterday actually, uh six clubs have confirmed their participation in the twenty twenty three National Development League, with two more hopefully set to join by early new year by early in the new year. A preliminary meeting of clubs took place on Tuesday where it was agreed that full details on competition structures will be deferred to January the 17th when the complete membership of the third tier is known. Champions Leicester will be back to defend their title and will be joined by Bellevue, Berwick, Kent, Oxford and newcomers Workington who make a welcome return to the sport at the redeveloped north side facility. Um, the league is awaiting confirmation from Armadale and Mildenhall, who are currently looking into various availability issues, and it is very much hoped that both clubs will come to the tax next year. Plymouth have declared their intention to step away from NDL Racing in 2023, but the door does op- remain open to any other club who wishes to participate prior to January the 17th. A points limit of 42 has been agreed. And the cut-off date has been brought forward by fortnight compared to this year, which will now be September the 17th. The NDL will also bring in the point scoring system adopted by the Premiership and the Championship, including the aggregate bonus points and super heats for drawn encounters, meaning a unified scoring system across the sport. And it is also anticipated that the transponder system being rolled out across the two senior leagues will be extended into the third tier during 2023. The BSB will update further on the full NDL structure for next season when confirmations are received. So okay. the big news, obviously, welcome back, Workington. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, from having seen the photographs of what they've done up there as well, it looks uh, looks really uh, looks really impressive and a, a lovely, nice track. Yeah, a lovely setting as well because it's right mm. on the coast, isn't it? So mm. you're going to be able to you know see that see the. Uh, I might see if I can get up, yeah. uh, up there so at some point, if I can find a day that it's warm enough. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was always a yeah. a problem at work. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to say there, is there? Um, well, until we know who these, for these next 
two teams are, of course, obviously we anticipate that it's going to be Armadale um, and Mildenhall, so... Yeah, uh, which would be good. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's fairly healthy mm-hmm. compared to the other leagues if those two teams are able to join. Yeah. And it sounds like there, there's a few other people that have s- expressed a, 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 an interest from reading between the lines of what they were saying. There. Yeah. Um, it's going to be very difficult to... I mean, obviously, there were no riders have been signed or anything, have no, there? in that not some, that league, no. Um, it's going to be difficult for them to. I mean, it's unfair for them to be doing to sign riders until all the all the well, some participants. Clubs, well, some clubs do it in the other two leagues, don't they? So, mm. yeah, which I never understand. You know, they must obviously, but they must have some idea as to what sort of structures you would are going have to be in so. place before they start signing people. So, you would have thought so. Oh dear! Are we yeah, keeping you awake? Oh, sorry, was that a yawn? It was. Yes. Sorry, that's impossible. I, I have to, to apologise. <laughs> I had. Um, I had a COVID jab yesterday, and it's made me. Oh, yeah. It's made me a bit. Yeah. yeah. It does affect you when you get to your age. Yeah. Yeah. Everything affects Probably. me when I get to this age. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that. Um, well, we've so heard. I think oh. what we should do for a bit of fun. Mm-hmm. Is I'm not pr- doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> I told you about that. No, it did get messy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is make a prediction based upon what we know now, which is very little, yeah. on who we think is going to win each league. And then when we come back and do our prediction based on knowing who's in each team, it's interesting to see if we've kept the same mm-hmm. ideas. So I'm going to go with the absolute sage, because I'm going to copy what he says, because he, know, he knows everything. That's in know, web know, so know, who's going to win the Premiership? Oh, Okay then, I'm going to go for uh, Paul. They'll Paul's do well. Not, they'll do well to win that league. They're they're right, right, they're right. Okay, who's in it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be Wolves. Uh, uh, Bellevue. Bellevue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll go for Bellevue. Yeah, okay. I like the name. And you, Matt? Oh, oh. I'll say Sheffield because they, you know, really obviously they'll they mm-hmm. won they finished top of the league last year, but had a good effort in the final, but. Unfortunately, not to be. I mean, it's very difficult to say Bellevue because they haven't signed one single rider. But yeah. I'm actually going to say Bellevue as well because I, I feel now they've got that monkey off the back of finally getting that mm. first title in 29 years. Um, that's obviously a, 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 nice. that's obviously released a bit of pressure off them now, isn't it? So, so Webby Championship is going to win the championship. Why are you coming to me first? Because. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Right, okay, let me have a quick think. Let me recollect. Recollect. Uh, Who's in the championship? Remind me again. Paul. Uh, No, no, no. no, 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 Birmingham. Scunthorpe. No, no, no. no, They're not going to do anything. Red car. Red car. Red car. Mm. Glasgow. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. I'll I'll go for Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah. Fair yeah. It'd be nice for, for them in a way, given that they might not have a place to race after next year. Mm. But Matt? Paul. I think that's the safe bet, isn't it? Yeah. They and shouldn't the, really be in that league, to be honest, Paul. But I also am saying Paul, yeah. because that's just saying. Yeah. And this is going to be fun. <laughs> the NDL. The NDL. Okay, don't don't tell me. Mildenhall. Are they well, they might be. Might yeah. be. Oh uh, yeah. We'll put Mouldy in for yeah. you. Kent. Okay, Kent. Uh, Leicester are in it again, aren't they? Yep. Well, they won it last two years, yeah. haven't they? I'm going to say Leicester. We'll see how, how close we are when we uh, when we reconvene in in March. Yeah. Then, well, so. what would be interesting to see whether the, the prediction without knowledge. He's better than the prediction with, with yeah. knowledge. Especially my knowledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just quickly before we go, um, Birmingham Speedway Supporters Club Christmas Party. Yes. Uh, 21st December, uh, half six to half seven cl- Cubs Club Party. Kids go free. S- uh, half seven to late adult party. 
at Aston Manor Cricket Club. Mm. £5 for members, £7 for non-members, supporting the science of the supporters club on the evening for the 2023 season. Mm. Presentation of honorary membership to Mr Brian Buck and to Tony Mole. This information just released. Just in. Yep. Yeah, uh, raffle buffet interviews with management. There you go. It's um, the, the supporters club of, of, of re... Um, what's the word? Restarted, Re- Re- rebooted, yeah, yeah. Re- and rebooted yeah, is a good rebooted, is a good one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I know Andy Dogmore, who's uh, sort of been the catalyst behind all of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. he's got some really good things. So yeah, get worked, yourselves in hard. there. Get worked yourself hard. in the supporters club if you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's finish off on a, on a positive as well. Of course, um, yeah. Coventry managed to uh, for now. Yes. Foot beating off um, Brand of the States. Oh, that although, is great news, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's the stuff. It's the first battle they've won, but it's certainly not the end of. Uh, the it's end not of look, the end of the war. There's a long, there's a long, a long while way to go for that one. So but it's a great, great start. Couldn't yeah. be better. So, yeah, that's a merry Christmas to everybody at Coventry. Yep. There, um, merry Christmas to all of you. I hope you all great get winter. the riders that you want, unless they're the riders that I want. Um, <laughs> And we'll see you in 2023. Yeah. Well, take care, everyone. Good night. Happy Christmas. Good night.